Morning, people. So today uh, I woke up really late and I'm going to post a video on how I package eggs um, and then ship them through the post office. So the process of packaging the eggs to keep them safe and you're never going to be able to guarantee that they're not going to break because once you drop it off the post office, it's out of your hands. If, there's a lot of videos out there of um, like a TSA workers, not TSA, um, airline workers, the whatever. They just don't care about people's, not, not everybody. There's people out there that do not care about your package, your baggage. So really out of your hands once you drop it off at the post office you just hope that somebody will actually do their job and take pride in their work but I've been lucky so far I haven't had any reported um, eggs broken um, I contact every person that I ship my eggs to um, once to see how they arrived and I contact them <clears throat> around a month later to if they haven't contacted me already to check on the status of the eggs whether they're uh, developing in the incubator or if they hatched them already and I do that for every single customer and so far I have zero uh, reports of eggs being broken <clears throat> and it's a very simple um, way to ship it's cheap and I probably only spend um, 20 cents, if that, 10 to 20 cents to ship my eggs if I were to break it all down. Uh, maybe more, I don't know, but really nothing. I don't go out and buy all these fancy things to put in the box. I don't double box, so I don't do none of that. And um, I'm just saying, I'm not saying I'll never have a broken egg because I know it'll happen. But I've been lucky, I guess. So, but this is how I do it. And um, I know there's a lot of people, they pick a lot of pride in their little packaging and they buy the foam carriers and double box and put bubble wrap in between the box and the other box. And they put little cards in there and thank you and all this, which is fine. It's all great. But I'm not doing that. I mean, I'm shipping eggs for the purpose to hatch eggs. And if they hatch, I'm hoping the customer return. So I'm not gonna spend all that extra time. I work full time, I work, my wife works full time. And that's just how we do it. Um, I, I have ordered eggs in the past and I've gotten those packages where it's all nice and fancy and it's nice, it is. It's nice knowing that uh, somebody took the time to do that. But the end result is the same. Um, no broken eggs, right? So. I've also had uh, eggs that were packaged really well that I bought to, to hatch myself. Well, supposedly packaged very well and have a few of them being broken and the yolk coming out of the box. So it's just dependent on who handles your packages through the whole process. I've shipped eggs all over the country so far and I'm just been lucky. So because I'm so lucky, you guys are now lucky to see how I do it. And, but before I do that, I need to uh, stop pacing. I need to get some feed ready for the goats, check on the chickens, fill their waters, make sure they're topped off. It is summertime already here. It's getting to be 100 degrees, 90s, 100s, in the middle of the day. Dogs are freaking out. And uh, yeah, that's that. So we're gonna get these animals fed, then a little package, some eggs. Looks like we're gonna have enough hay for today, so I'm just gonna drop some scoops of the grain mix that I do. That they just get every now and then.
and leave the gate open if you never do, but these goats are doing the way. See this little one we got, we can her up and her sister up. Don't know what kind of goat she is. We free range turkeys. We don't keep any of our chicken or turkeys up. To get along with everybody. Nobody's killing nobody. And you gotta hold your bucket high because these goats, they will jump on you to get it. Start feeding them up here in this little mound. So not much of a hill, but just uh, give the grass a break. Let it come in, plowing, getting some growth. And then we got bones and uh, the other goats over here, which looks like they're in the back eating the trees because I opened it up. So we just have bones to feed. But to do that, Gotta, this is on, so I gotta not shock myself. I just put it on the insulator like that. <clears throat> they were pushing this gate open, so I eliminated all possibilities of putting a hot wire up and putting this powder pin in here. lost the pin. No, I don't have a pin. <laughs> Alright, the goats see me. <clears throat> They're gonna come running. The buck. Here's the weather. We threw this weather in here. Oh, there is. You can see Zeke is just a beast. We, uh, we push that cow around. This is the weather. Um, he's a. He just turned. I think he might have just turned a year old. Let me put the papers again. Um, he's about four between three and four years old. He's tall. He's a big, big boy. Gentle. And Zeke's a, um, he'll come up to you eat out of your hand. He just kind of fights you when you want to do anything else with him. So trying to get him to, to trim hooves or, or whatever, he'll, he'll, um, he'll push into you. So yeah, he's a, I don't have a scale, but I love to weigh him. I always tell people he's probably around 200, but I love to weigh him. I like to weigh uh, bones as well. Um, let's see where he's at. I mean, we got him when he was two days old. But uh, yeah, I want to weigh him, and especially before I drop him off to get processed, I want to check his weight. Hey guys, <clears throat> I'm just missing the cotter pin. It fell. And then we're going up this way, so I can't just set it in. It won't fit. But. Uh, you know, it just it was just extra precaution that I took. But yeah, it's just one of those things. It bounces and it's just gone. I'm 
metal detector. But we'll be all right. I'll leave it like that. I'll put that power back on without getting shocked, hopefully. I have the uh, on-off switch on the outside of this gate that I can't reach it. Let's see? So we'll just reach over, grab this, stick it right back on there. Good. Juice to that wire, and I'll keep them off it. Yeah, we got this. Uh, don't get me wrong, goats don't want the dogs around them, but we got this goat right here, purebred Kiko. And uh, we love her, she's a real pretty friendly. And uh, you know, she has apparently she's dog aggressive. She's no more dog aggressive than uh, the one, this one right here behind us, or in front of me. And this mom over here feeding. See? But they don't chase them. They'll chase them if they get close. You see, she'll stand her ground, but she ain't gonna run after them. She knows it's not worth her time. This is actually her daughter right here, this black one. We've got the white one's daughter. This one will give us some kids this season. It's next season. So it's just a quick little charge, but it's not too bad. They'll come in here with me every day. The little ones um, are real curious about the dog, so they kind of go nose to nose. And Rip just wants to play. Hi, oh, Rip. Hi, oh, Rip. And if you guys didn't know, we did a DNA test on this dog. And that was way off, I might guess. But, uh, nobody, I, I, there's nobody that would have guessed who he is, so. I like a little little giveaway I was gonna do. Nobody responded, which is fine. Nobody would have came close. But he's actually a 73% Mexican hairless, um, and you see he goes right around that turkey. Nobody bothers nobody here. And the reason why this turkey's missing some feathers in the back, and the other one on her on his belly. These two are always fence riding and fighting each other to the, to the fast to the point where they get bloody faces and everything. And then they'll stop fighting for a couple weeks. They heal up pretty fast. Um, you'll know if they're fighting because their faces or snoods, they'll be um, black and it's just scabbed. And I don't do nothing for them. I don't put nothing on them. They stop fighting, they heal up, and they give each other a rest, but they're inseparable. They always have to be together. So it's. They're not always like this with a fence in between. But you see, um, they're walking right around our dogs. We got two full grown German Shepherds. We got Rip. And we got this little rat dog over here. He's actually uh, mostly Pomeranian, which that's DNA. Pomeranian, cattle dog, and something else, like a rat terrier. Or Chihuahua, I mean. But chickens in with the turkeys, in with the goats and cow. They're all good, man. The neighbor does his little tree maintenance and comes over in the morning and drops fresh feed down. Goats eat it up. Uh, I'm thinking this is elm. Goats eat it up. And then once they, eat, they eat it up, I put it over in the burn pile. These turkey poults are doing well. Um, don't need to feed them. They got food. They got water. Pretty, pretty good amount of water. And uh, that's all I do for all my chickens, my any kind of bird. And I hatch them. They'll sit in that incubator or the hatching tray for a while. Um, use this heating plate and keep it plugged in. I did have a thermostat with it, and that thing just stopped working. So I just plug it in. Right to the top level. But they all get under there and lay down at night. And then, uh, just that daytime here is, is, uh, gets warm. So we leave the shop door open and we put this chain link channel over the top. Got some netting on that side for a gap. And cause they, um, this is two weeks old, I think, three weeks. Some of them are three and some are two. And they fly. They will jump up. You can see their wings pretty developed already. 
they, they can fly. We've already had a couple of them get out and get in the yard and stuff, and we just don't want them getting picked off by a, a hawk or anything yet. So, but yeah, they're doing really well. We sold like, um, we sold probably seven of them, seven or eight of them. One guy came back, drove, drove an hour. He bought two and then he came back and bought three more. But yeah, we we don't know if they're gonna be toms or hens and we're hoping for hens and we are starting to think that we got more toms than hens, but we hope not. If we do, we're just gonna butcher them younger than we did our last ones and um, they'll be in the freezer if they don't sell. We have a few turkey in the freezer already. Um, yeah. They're doing really well. You see they're curious. They see my fingers dangling. They're gonna... A little iffy about the camera, but they see my ring on my finger and they want to go after it. These are bourbon reds. Real pretty color. They're getting like a almost like a pinkish tint to their feathers right now. They say turkey are real susceptible, sensitive to uh, getting sick and dying uh, when they're young. Um. I haven't seen it too much really so far. I mean, we've only hatched two batches, and um, these are part of our original stock of, of turkeys. Um, our four hens. So um, we haven't noticed anything that's different than the chickens. Besides, these guys are more curious, and will come up to you easier. Um, they do grow faster, and yeah, they, their mannerisms are a little different, but they're, uh, they're not, I don't feel like they're more sensitive to dying or anything, susceptible to dying than chicks. But with that said, uh, so far, ducks are definitely the most hardiest. Uh, we've had ducks, we've hatched ducks, and they've, uh, we thought they were going to die, just they, their, their, their limp, their heads drop. Um, these are like a couple day old ducks or whatever. They go from one extreme to the other. Or we basically write them off. There was one in there. Um, I was gonna just, you know, I didn't think, this looked like it was suffering. <clears throat> we uh, take it to the neighbor's house. Uh, we were sitting over there. My wife grabs it, to, brings it over there. And we're like, all right, whatever, we'll just look at her tomorrow. Go in there in the morning, she's perked up, walking around, running around with the rest of them. So who knows why that is? Something deficient. Um, do everything the same to all my birds now, but at that time I wasn't doing everything I do now, like offering a, a egg yolk to all the chickens and ducks, and everything gets one now. As soon as they hatch, I make it available. <clears throat> And uh, who knows, maybe maybe deficient some, or maybe it's just them developing still. But just give them a chance, give them a day or two, and if it doesn't improve, then there you go. I do bring my, <clears throat> I do walk my packages in to the post office. And I like to use my phone lately because the microphone on my camera, I don't know what it is, but it's making like this weird staticky noise in the beginning of my videos. So I've been, and it's harder to use the phone, trust me. But, um, so if it sounds clear or you hear like a little tick, tick, tick in the, in the videos when I use my camera. Um, anyway, that's how I do it. I, I walk them into the post office. I don't let, I don't wait for the post guy to come and pick it up because that's an extra ride in a truck that that package is going to be doing um there's a place right down the road for me that you can actually drop off your packages it's a seasonal thing they're about to close in a couple days 
and uh, neighbors coming to feed the goats. So, I don't know what time it is. I gotta get make sure I get ready for work and stuff, but um, neighbor just gave me a bottle. You'll be seeing this in a future video being used. But um, yeah, that's it. That's how I package my eggs. And it's very simple. You wouldn't think that that would work going from one part of the country. And I'm pretty far southwest, two and a half hours from San Diego. So I've shipped them to West Virginia, multiple packages to West Virginia. Um, one to New York, like three or four to Michigan. Apparently, uh, I was selling a lot of turkey eggs too. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's possible, and it's. I, I was looking at those foam, uh, foam thingies that you put the eggs in. It's got the slots in it, and then the, the cover and all that. There's so much money. There's so much money to buy those. I just can't, again, justify it. I'm not going to ask this, the buyer to, um, I'm not going to up my charge because of the shipping when I know my eggs will get there just the same way, unharmed, for nickels. You know, whatever, a couple handfuls of pine shavings. One of those bags of pine shavings, I don't even know what they cost, but it's not much. I think I'm on my second bag of pine shavings this since I started selling, uh, few March 14th I think was my first um, sale since I've started selling again and I'm on my second bag and I'm not shipping every single day but I do have a consistent auction going and I try to stagger it so I know I'm gonna have fresh eggs um, I'm taking a break for a week from selling on eBay and we're gonna hatch out as many as we can get in a week. Well, we're gonna hatch out 14. We're gonna add those to our turkeys, turkey and duck eggs in the incubator. Um, and we're gonna do a little experiment to see um, because it's gonna be the hatch time for uh, turkey and duck are 28 and chicken is 21. So we're waiting a week so they can all hatch together and we can raise them up together. But we're doing a little experiment. And I'll be posting that video on too of why we choose to dry hatch. Bunch of reasons. Alright guys, so what I do for the eggs. I get some pine shavings. I use the fine pine shavings. do as you can see we um, put about half full into this box I use a flat rate shipping medium medium box for uh, six eggs and then for 12 people that order 12 eggs I will Put it in a large flat rate, which is like five bucks more. Just so they're not so tightly crammed in there. I like a little gap in between the eggs. Oh, let me zoom out. Okay. So about half full. Um, you can always kind of move them around and make your little indentations. But from there, from there, we're gonna grab some eggs and I'm gonna do this with just some eggs, regular eggs. This is for demonstration. We do have an order to ship tomorrow, but we'll get those eggs tomorrow. So what I do is uh, toilet paper. Knife. Okay, so it basically, <coughs> go to the post office. You can actually go online too. Get these boxes like this. They'll send them to you. They'll bring them to your house. Just drop them in your driveway in a packs of 10, I think. <clears throat> no charge. Free. Go on our website, USPS. 
www.gov.com or gov, I can't remember, and it's free. They'll drop them off because when you do pay for it is when you ship them. So get your boxes, walk out the post office with them, take them home, and then start making them, taping the bottom of them. I just put a single strand across just to suck it together tight this way, and then I put one across this way to keep the bottom from opening up. All right, so now what I do is I grab some eggs. Okay. Here we go. I got this little tray over here. I, I keep my, I use this tray right here. This is what I keep my eggs in that I'm gonna ship. And then I'm gonna I label them too. Um, you see these eggs right here are I am Samani's, and these are mainly what I'm selling. I mean I got everything for sale, but um, these are what people are buying right now. And uh, these other eggs are just these are actually eggs we're eating. So they're fertile, but we're just we eat them. So uh, here's what I do. <clears throat> I'll take some toilet paper. I'll probably need to get another roll, but this is for demonstration, right? Just like that. Might be too much. I take an egg. Make sure you know where the pointy head is. All right. I always kind of do it to my right and start rolling. Just like that. <clears throat> That's all I do. And then inside it, I make a little nice little area that it'll sit pointy side down. If it wiggles, it's fine. All right, we do have um, some that are pre-wrapped. Boom. And just kind of burrow it in there. I'll be pulling these back out, so it's not a huge deal. All right. Imagine, you see what I just did? Imagine that they're wrapped, okay? I kind of leave a nice little, nice little gap in there. All right, somebody ordered six eggs, right? Well, now what I do is I'll go grab some, some nice looking <clears throat> assorted eggs. I got some naked necks. I got uh, Easter eggers. I got Brahma. And what I, they're all gonna be <clears throat> with not the same rooster, but And I'll, I'll plug any kind of a gap, or I'll, I'll, I'll adjust to where I can fit, you know, three, two, three more eggs in there. If I have an overload of I am Samani eggs, which I never do, I'll throw an extra one of those in there, if that's what they're ordering. So imagine all those with toilet paper on them. I'm not gonna have enough for all these. I'll have to go grab another roll. And then what I do, I shouldn't be doing this in the house, but, I grab the pine shavings and I just put it over the top. Not in a huge chunk, just kind of sprinkle it because you want it to fall in between the in between the gaps. And you can do a little shaky, not not hard, just I mean realize it's not gonna be in your hands after you brought this off. I'm sure they're not the gentlest people with your package. All right, keep it going. And just press it down. Remember, this is gonna have something on top of it too. They're probably gonna stack it. So what I do is I just overfill it slightly. And you see how those are going, pointing down just a little bit. It's not good enough. Put more in there. There we go. You even probably put one more in there. <clears throat> I actually got one right here that I need to ship. Put the label on it. 
You see how it's kind of domed. I'm hoping that if they do want to put a package on it, it's going to be a little lopsided for the other package. So I hope they put mine on top. So I leave a little dome to them. And I could probably actually use another handful. And, uh, but we're going to, that's just for demonstration. I'm not going to ship this one. What I do, <coughs> grab my tape. Dog barking outside. I pull it tight this way just to get that gap nice and sealed. Cut it. I do one strand, one strand of tape. Pull it down. You can see it like kind of indentation down there. <coughs> Boom, done, that's it. Now, now we got this uh, all right, simulation guys. <coughs> We got this label, let's say, right? It's gonna be two Joe Schmo from the Marshall Homestead. All right, the Marsh. All right, <clears throat> so now what I do is I take this label that I, I use PayPal through eBay a lot of times, the ones I sell on eBay, and I'll I'll have the label created and, and pay through it, pay through uh, PayPal for it. You actually get a little discount when you do it that way. And I go to the top part, boom, go all the way across, seal it. <clears throat> the bottom part of this label is going to have uh, going to have a barcode. So I try to be real careful with the bottom part <clears throat> and make sure that this tape is nice and flat and not crinkled like that. Not crinkled over like this is up here so that they can get a good scan of it. Otherwise, they're probably gonna be rude and ruin your package and they can manually type it in. I'm just joking, I don't know, how, that's not how they all work. And then I just cover the label with, uh, with tape so they encase it, whatever. Maybe they drop it off in someone's, I don't know why. I just do it that way. Not that it's gonna be sitting outside in the rain. And then that's it. <clears throat> you see how it's packaged. I got one strand on the bottom and across. Also, uh, I do this. I know a lot of people are against it because it's a target. If you put this on your package, they're more likely to ruin it. Okay, but whatever, I did it. I don't have a broken egg reported yet. I do, I just do two sides, all right. You can buy this, you can buy a roll of this. You can find different kinds too um, on eBay. Uh, some post offices I'm hearing are giving people issues by labeling them like this where you have to pay extra or something. I haven't had that problem. Nobody's, I've actually told the post office that I'm shipping fertile hatching eggs and they kind of are impressed and ask about it, but they don't tell me it's gonna cost more. So it depends on your post office. Ours here, <clears throat> they don't care. They don't want to be involved in your life. They're just curious. They don't want to be, control every aspect of your life, like some people. And then I just trim my, I got scissors too, by the way. Uh, put it back in my little shipping drawer. Boom, there you go. Now, see how it, it balances on that other one? It's kind of like this, right? So, I don't know, it's just my little mind telling me that, well, oh, this is a little more flat. This isn't, let's say this is someone else's package. I wanna put this one on it instead of one on this where it's lopsided. That way I don't have the weight on the top of my package. Maybe it'll be on top and then it'll be more prone to falling. I don't know. But anyways, that's how I do it. And then if I have more than, you can always grab some kind of a basket. Otherwise you're gonna be struggling carrying a ton of these boxes into the post office. I just, I do bring them into the post office. Here. Anyways, hope you like this video. If you want to take a chance package the way i do i'm telling you it works for me 
I, I don't know how your post office works, but so far my post office has been doing me very good. But once it's out of their hands, it goes to another facility, another facility. If you track your packages, you'll see that it goes through a few facilities. It gets ran all night, it gets processed through other facilities and whoever's working in that warehouse in the middle of the night all mad because they're working at night you never know so I, I yeah I'll say I have some luck but that's that's the name of the game there's no guarantee to uh, hatching eggs they're eggs so you put them in a box and send them across the country there's always gonna be a chance of something breaking so that said hope you like this video if you do Comment below, um, tell me where I screwed up, and I'll address that later. Uh, subscribe, share it. Hope this helps.